name is Kunal Kundu and I'm an artist based in Calcutta, India and uh, I'm also the author of Wildlife on Paper. It's a book on wildlife from all over the world who are at risk of getting endangered and uh, this is done in uh, crumpled paper art style. Uh, this is a style that I've developed uh, and uh, this is like I, I make the sculptures out of uh, regular paper of these animals and then I shoot it and take it into the digital space and then colorize it, add the digital background to it to make the illustrations. There is a reason that uh, I've done this book. Uh, see, when I was growing up in Calcutta, it was a suburban place and uh, there was a lot of uh, animal interaction that had happened. So I, I become an animal lover. I was completely fascinated by different uh, life forms all around me. Like I have seen uh, buffaloes, uh, I've seen vultures, jackals, different kinds of snakes, lizards, monitors, um, uh, different kinds of birds. So and I had a close interaction with all these kind of animals in, when I was growing up. So uh, and when I uh, then I uh, when I went to a different city for my higher studies and for jobs and everything, and uh, I kind of suddenly lost touch with this animal. Uh, loving side of me. So when I came back to Calcutta uh, back in 2009, I, I was quite shocked that these animals were not uh, there anymore. It's like there's no fish in the pond, uh, the jackals are not there anymore, the buffaloes are not there. So it was quite, uh, it came as a rude shock. So I thought, uh, uh, let me do something about it. As an artist, what can I do? Okay, let me let me write an illustrator book and which will talk about these animals so that uh, the readers will get motivated uh, it will make them sensitive towards other life forms which we cohabit in, in, in our place. So uh, that's how uh, this book came about. Let me talk about uh, uh, how I developed this crumpled paper art style. Uh, I, I've been working for almost uh, uh, more than like almost 15 years as a visual artist and I used to work in uh, different styles like uh, different mediums like be it pencil, charcoal, watercolor, acrylic, uh, digital, uh, like anything. And that used to work for me because it's like uh, different clients, uh, they had uh, different kind of requirements, different kind of mediums they wanted for their artworks or designs. So that used to be the thing. I, I was quite fine with it. But uh, two years back when I was about to turn 40, I was thinking like, okay, I've been working for so many years. I, don't, I still don't have any particular uh, like personal style of my own. I, I don't have any signature style. So I, I, I thought like I should get some like something which is my own. Now it's like getting a personal style is something it, it doesn't really happen like if you think about it and it, it happens the next day it doesn't happen like that. So what I did was like I stopped working for uh, some time like almost three four months I didn't work at all. Like I was just uh, I was in my house, I was, I was just decluttering my mind, I was thinking like what should I do. So I tried out different styles uh, with different mediums like I tried watercolor, I tried pastels, I tried uh, pencils, I tried digital and everything was like, it, it came out nice but the thing is it wasn't my own thing, there was no personal voice, it, it was as if I was fo trying to follow uh, another artist's work. So that felt really bad. So. Uh, and I was kind of uh, thinking like what should I do? So around that time my son was uh, uh, 1.5 years old he was around that time and he used to play with my uh, rough sheets or something paper and he used to crumple those things and throw around and play with that. So one of those days I, I was just cleaning up the floor and I picked up one of those pieces and it looked like a uh, dog's face. So that uh, like a like a, that eureka moment happened. And I, I took that uh, piece of paper, that crumpled shape, and I added the body and the legs and the tail and everything. And I uh, shot it on camera, took it into a, uh, the computer and put a digital background to it. And, and it looked quite interesting. It was like a dog made out of paper. It was like uh, a paper art, which is not like a, uh, regular origami or uh, paper engineering or paper cut or something. It was something very dif different. I like I have not seen anything done uh, in, in this way. So I, I thought like, okay, let, let me do something with it. So I next made uh, one animal, then uh, made another animal. So I made many animals like that. And at that, uh, at that time, I was thinking like, okay, uh, I don't have, uh, I didn't have a book uh, at that point of time. Like uh, later my agent, uh, Anna, also, she uh, 
said like why don't you make a book out of it that happened later on but at that that point i was trying just trying to make animals out of this new style that i've developed so that's how this thing came about and uh, uh, that's uh, and people have been uh, appreciative of it and it's uh, it's something uh, i thought that it's unique but a uh, lot of other people have also told me that it's kind of unique it's uh, it's a very different kind of style and i'm still developing it but i'm quite happy with how it has turned out so far now let me uh, show a few of the animals uh, from the book okay uh, this is uh, this is a sumatran uh, orangutan and let me read out from the book uh, the elusive red ape the sumatran orangutan has red brown hair all over its body it also has a face full of beard the orangutan is the largest arboreal animal in the world this means it spends almost all of its time high up in trees and travels around by swinging from branch to branch to support this tree hopping life the orangutan has incredibly strong arms which are twice as long as its legs fruits are a major part of its diet like humans the orangutan's thumbs are opposable meaning they can be moved around to touch the other fingers freely this helps the orangutan to pick and peel fruits easily next is oxbill sea turtle okay the oxbill sea turtle gets its name because it has a narrow pointed bird like beak It is the smallest of the sea turtles but its slender streamlined and agile appearance makes it the fastest. Its shell is called a carapace and it has two claws on each of its front flippers. It also has two pairs of scales on the front of its eyes unlike any other sea turtle species. Its unique beak allows the turtle to reach into small cracks and crevices in the coral reef to extract sponges and other invertebrates. Known as coral reef gardeners, the turtles help the corals by eating highly poisonous sponges. The oxbill sea turtle is not only graceful and beautiful but it is the only known reptile to be biofluorescent it can glow yellow pink orange red green or purple depending on the temperature of the water it is in this is a pacific walrus the pacific walrus is the larger of the two walrus species found on earth with its giant size sometimes more than 10 feet huge elephantine tusks grizzled whiskers thick crimson brown skin and blubbery body no wonder it's called the king of the arctic its tusks are actually canine teeth that never stop growing the walrus uses its tusks to break through ice climb out of the water establish dominance and sometimes defend from predators like orcas or polar bears its thick skin and the blubber keep it warm the walrus also has the ability to slow its heart rate to keep it stay comfortable in the frigid habitat The whiskers on its face are called vibrissae and are used to locate food in dark waters. The Pacific walrus may be slow and clumsy on land, but it's an adept swimmer. It goes down to the ocean floor regularly and can hold its breath for nearly 30 minutes. Now, uh, let's see some of the original sculptures that uh, is in the book. Uh, for that I will introduce uh, my son. Uh, come here, Shujan. Uh, yes. Now, what is your name? Tell them. My name is Shija Goshkundu and I love purple peppers. Very good. Okay. Now we'll show them um some of the original sculptures, okay? Okay. Sure, sure. sure. Show it to the camera like this. Yeah. I'll show it. Yes. Yes. This is the well. Well. Okay. okay. I'm going to show how Look in the book. Uh, yeah, this is the whelp sculpture. Yeah, um, this is the whelp sculpture. Yes. This is the sea turtle. Yes, this is the sea turtle. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why color is sea turtle? Yes. Because the sea turtle changes color. Okay. Yes, I know. You know that. Very good. Thank you. The actual artwork from the book. Let's see the sculpture. Should this you? This one. This one. Ah. Uh, okay. First, first, let's see. See, this is the sculpture. Oxbill sea turtle. Okay. Now, next one is. Let's see which one. Which one? Which one? This is oh. a walrus. This is a walrus. Yes. Walrus. Can you see the book? Yes. This is the walrus. See. This is the walrus sculpture. Yeah, yes, got two tusks. Yeah, two tusks. Yes, two very tusks. good. See, this is the 
This is the walrus, huh? This is the walrus. Uh, Pacific walrus. Pacific walrus. Very good. Thank you. This is the Sunda pangolin. Sunda pangolin. Yes, you like? It's so skelly. Yes? He has got, he has got lots and lots of scales. Yes. 100,000, 100. Okay. Million. Now, now let's see, let, now let's see the artwork from the book. Okay? Now let's see the artwork from the book. Okay. Okay. This is the Sunda Pang. pangolin yeah. in the book. Yes. Yeah. See? Lots of scales. S was Sunda pangolin. Yes. Very good. Now let's see another sculpture, the last one. This is an orangutan. Let's see that. Okay, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Okay, you go. Hold it like this. Oh, see? This is the orangutan sculpture. This, see? This is the final sculpture. Yes, this is the orangutan sculpture from the book. Okay. S is for Sumatran or orangutan. Sumatran orangutan. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you. Awesome. These are all inside this book. There are 16 uh, animals like this uh, created out of crumpled paper art. And okay, Shuchu, now we can say bye to your audience. Bye bye. <laughs> Once I'm done with the sculptures, like uh, then I shoot uh, them uh, on my DSLR camera and uh, then uh, take it to the digital space to do the rest of the work. And I try to shoot it like uh, because I already have a visual in my mind. So there is a light and shade uh, playing. So there is a source of light. So I try to shoot it uh, accordingly. And uh, now I'm going to show you the steps quickly so that you can un have an understanding like how I arrive at the final artwork. I want to show you uh, uh, an actual demo of uh, of an animal that I uh, I'll make with the crumpled paper style that I have, and for that I've chosen one uh, deer. You, you can see it on my computer screen. It's like uh, uh, it's not very uh, complex uh, design or anything. Now you can see like there is a rectangular head, the, the big ears, rectangular uh, sorry uh, triangular ears, slender neck part here and a rectangular body and slender long legs these are like fairly straight and these has these have like a little bend in, in there i'll show you the materials that i uh, use uh, uh, first uh, uh, these are like a4 regular a4 paper and the weightage of the paper is 75 gsm that's uh, that's the uh, weightage of paper that I use and I feel that's the best for this kind of uh, work. So that is there, I, there are like seven, eight things, maybe you won't need everything, uh, all of the papers, but it's good to keep a few extra. Then I have uh, a regular glue, uh, like it's like any craft glue you can use. And uh, then uh, I have uh, a matte stick with me to spread the glue like uh, on the uh, when you join things you need to spread the glue so that's why I use a matte stick you can take any stick sort of thing now first what I do is it's like uh, I try to uh, see the shape of the animal and and study it uh, uh, in a in a in a detailed way so that I understand how it looks in 3d how what I need to crumple what shape I need to crumple on so that it uh, it becomes like that animal Okay, so what the first thing that I do is like I, I make a sketch of the uh, I don't know whether you can see this yeah uh, I make a sketch of the animal in a very simple uh, scribble kind of way so that I can understand the shape better 
and uh, then what I do is like once I've done this sketch to understand the shapes better then I, I further re refine it into much simpler shapes like the triangular head, the triangular uh, ears, the rectangular body and the slender legs. So this really helps to uh, understand how the forms are in a 3D space. So that really helps me to uh, make the uh, actual crumple, crumpling of the paper. So now uh, what I'll do is, uh, now uh, first thing is like the sculpture is going to be around this much size, say around 7-8 inches, uh, lengthwise and height wise also I think around 7-8-9 inches. So for that the head is going to be this much, say around uh, an inch or something or a little smaller. So for that I don't need the whole sheet of paper, whole A4 sheet. So what I'll do is I, I'll just... Uh, I'll just uh, make it into two halves. Take this one half, and first thing you do is you crumple the paper, and that's uh, that. Uh, that goes for every sculpture that I have done for this book, and uh, and uh, this is the style that I use. Like first, you need to crumple the paper. Okay. Once you've done crumple the paper, what you do is you now uncrumple it slowly so that you don't tear the paper. Now, now I'll start with the head. So now I need to make something which is triangular. In shape and and, and and the thing is like it you, you like there's no step like uh, origami that after this step you do that or something like that it's, it's very flexible it's it's like I, I, I like to have fun with this medium so it's like I don't really think that uh, you have to really follow it to the T and uh, do something so it's basically it's it's like this this shape is there like you you know like if i put it here like this the triangular shape is already kind of there okay now this is the part which will go into the body okay this is the neck part okay now what i'll do is now i'm going to make the uh, body part which is like a rectangular this thing so for that i will need uh, full pa paper uh, sheet of paper only. So what I'll do is the first thing I'll crumple it I'll uncrumple it slowly Now what I'll do is I'll try to get that shape And while I'm making the body, I'm trying to refine, I'm, I'm pressing the head a little bit so that the correct shape comes on. Okay. And don't worry too much about it. Now, now I know that, okay, I need to stick this bit to the neck part here for the next thing. So what I'll do is I'll have, I'll put in my glue here. You need to uh, hold this for some time okay. and uh, don't worry too much about the uh, shape not coming on properly this is it just started doing it so eventually it will come don't worry <laughs> even uh, I find it difficult to get it right at the first go but it's since it's like a crumpled uh, paper into shape so it's like there is a lot of things that will happen later on okay so don't worry too much You need to uh, keep it pressed because it's just a regular glue, so it will take some time to stick stick on. Now you take one half sheet of paper, you crumple it, uncrumple it. Now what you you have this head and neck part, you have the body from one side. 
what you need to do is you need to now I kind of uh, crumple the edges this way. Now what you need to do is you need to so this is the shape we are getting at. Okay? Like from this part it covers the neck, goes behind the neck and kind of gets onto the body part. Okay. So this is the shape. You, you need to remember this bit like while making these things. Okay. So this also needs to be stuck with glue. So I'll just take this, take this off. Okay, you understand. Okay, this is coming where you keep this and you glue this thing. Now gluing at the edges and a little bit here and there is fine. Like the edges should be the glue should be there on the edges. I'm using the matchstick to spread the glue evenly, as evenly as possible, because this is kind of crumpled and uh, it's difficult. Now, if I remember it, this is what we are trying to achieve. Okay, so this is how I'm going to. Need to hold it so that hold it for some time so that the glue uh, kind of is stuck. You try to uh, shape it a little bit closer to the animal that you are making the drawings that you have done like the shape that you wanted to do so it's it's going to come and that, that's the fun part of this crumple paper thing it's it's little uh, it's little like playing uh, with clay or something modeling clay so instead of clay this is paper but it uh, but there is an option where you can actually reshape the things a little bit here and there to suit your mood okay so this is Like if I if the just to show you properly the head is turned this way, but uh, eventually I will make it turn this way. Okay, and that can happen. Like you can press it a little further here; it will stay here. Okay. Now this bit is done. What we'll do is uh, we'll try to make the legs now. Again, I'll uh, make I'll have this one shape from the lift. Now the front legs are fairly simple. There is a bend like this, and then it comes straight almost. So I'm going to try to do that. <clears throat> so this is one of the legs and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the other leg, other front leg as well before sticking it to the body. So both your legs are there. We'll handle this later on. When you stick it, it comes closer. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Stick this two together now. So remember the positions where you want to stick it. Okay. Now these two uh, legs are done. The front legs are done. Now what I'll do is I'll make the back legs. Okay. The back legs you remember like it it doesn't come straight. It goes this way and this way. Okay. 
one goes this way and the other also goes this way but little lesser okay so let's try to make two out of these two shapes like uh, one half of a shape so you can see like I made a similar kind of shape <coughs> So now I'm going to stick this in. So your three legs are more or less done. Okay. Now I'll make the last leg. This one is like this, so I'm going to check it there. I'm going to stick this leg also. Your deer is almost there. Now we're going to make the uh, ears and the tail. I'll take so one third part of piece of paper. So I have around two sheets like this. Complete. And just check how you want to make this triangle shape. So we have two ears like this. Okay. Now we're going to stick it. Before sticking it, we we'll just check for the placements. Okay. So your tear is almost ready. And with this, let's make the tail. Stick it up now. Your uh, crumpled paper deer is ready. So this is your crumpled paper art deer. It's. Uh, I hope this demo helps you to understand how I work on this crumpled paper art, and uh, you can. Uh, actually make a uh, lot more complex uh, animals or uh, other things whatever you wish for but uh, this is uh, this is how i go about it and there is no particular uh, uh, like instruction that you have to follow or anything it's like you can just have fun with paper by giving it shape and and when you do it little slower and uh, you uh, you put in a little more effort than a hurried uh, demo job i think you can get the proportions a little better. This is my book, Wildlife on Paper. It is published by West Margin Press and it is available at Book Bar, Denver and wherever books are sold. I hope you'll enjoy it the way I've enjoyed making it. Thank you.